Hey, how y'all doing out there in YouTube land? This is the letter coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Well, I got a package here today, and I don't know where it's coming from. I mean, the, I'm just going to say the, the first name of it is from Sammy. And so I don't know if it's something that I purchased that has a different address on it. Because it looks like a personal address. But anyway, let's unbox it. Let's find out what it is today. Doing the unboxing is the knife that went to work with me today. My new Sin Cut. Watuga. Absolutely loving this one. D2 blade, D2 stone wash blade, full flat ground blade, three millimeters thick, like you know, all the Civivi plunge locks are. This is a pl plunge lock, Sin Cut plunge, plunge lock. Basically, it's a, a Civivi. It feels like a Civivi. Three and a half inch blade, natural G10. I love natural G10. Natural G10 is becoming one of my favorite G10s. I just like it. It just looks nice. This one's all um, stone washed. All the hardware and everything stone washed. The pocket clip is a deep carry, and the it's not embedded into the handles, which is sort of nice because then the other side doesn't look kind of weird. So you know, like you know, with a cutout for the, the other pocket for the pocket clip for the, if you want to carry it on the other side. So I sort of like it being on top with the flush screws the best. So if you do want to switch it, or it doesn't make the other side look weird. You know, I love the way um, Civivi or Sincut does their um, lanyard. So they only have a big old giant hole in it, in the handle. That's nice. And this knife is solid all the way, all the way up. There's no, there's no uh, detent lash or anything. It's like, and it stays solid. I've been constantly playing with it since, I, since I've had it. For the last two days and <clears throat> it's awesome it's a great work knife too because of the blade what do we call that a, a modified sheep's foot worn cliff <laughs> I absolutely love blades like this though because I main thing I use knives for is opening up packages I'm gonna keep it real open up packages and, and food prep at work all right, so I don't know where this one's coming from. I'm not going to show the address because I don't know if it's coming from a person, you know, like a, a, view, a viewer or something. I don't know where this one's coming from. Oh, it is something that I bought. Okay. I think I know what it is now. I can't remember where I bought it from now. So I'm going to have to put the um, information where I got this one at. in the details of the, um, this is Missouri City, Texas. I'll let y'all know that. Okay. Cause I did, I did buy a CJRB lately. It should be a, a plunge like this, what I bought. I'm trying to look for uh, the name of it. I don't see the name of it. Okay, so I can't remember the name of the knife. I'm sorry. Oh, I remember what it is. It's the Lago. If, it, if it's the one I bought, it's the Lago. CJRB Lago. Plunge lock. Okay. Yep, it is. This is the one I bought. Oh, that's nice. CJRB likes a VB, you know, it's like really nice because I like artisan knives. Artisan knives and and uh, CJRB and Wii and Civivi and now Sincut and Kaiser. I like Kaiser too. They're all among the, my favorite knives that come from China. I've tried out and I really liked. In the past couple of years, you know, because I've never bought knives from China, really. Not because I hate China or anything like that. It's just I had a bad experience buying a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of knives from um, from a Chinese manufacturer. I think it was Master Cutlery. I think it was, and the knives were all junk. Oh, this is nice, centered perfectly. Has a nice weight to it too. Oh, that's really nice. I really like this one, people. 
Oh, that feels so good in my hand. Oh, and the front finger, the front finger choil is big. So it fits my fat finger. Well, I don't really have fat fingers, I guess, but I don't have skinny fingers either. <laughs> but it fits my fingers. And look all that, oh, look all that ram I got on this handle. It feels good. And the way the handle shape, it feels really good in hand. It sort of reminds me of my Spyderco uh, um, Sliver X, the way the handle is. And this handle, it would, this, this knife would be very safe for, for a button lock or a plunge lock knife. And the reason why I say that is because it has a deep finger groove and you got enough flipper to, oh yeah, to really protect. You'd have to break your finger in order for this to close in on your hand if you're holding it like this, the way that you're supposed to be holding it. Even if you're holding it like this, it's not going to, Yep, it's still not going to fold in. I really like this one, people. I might have to get another, because you know me, when I really like something, this one feels really good. I mean, I like the, I like, I like the Sin Cut. I like this one, too. But this one I like better. I'm being honest. But let me carry it for a few days, and, and, uh, and I'll let you all know which one I like better. It's, it's, uh, it's been skeletonized with round holes in it. And, the, and it looks like the liners are fully polished. Whereas, well, this one's a budget knife. This is not really a budget knife. It's more like a, you know, to me, the budget knives are like the knives are like, let's say, $60 and less. And then when you go above $60 to like about $100, that's like I would call a mid-grade. And then the nicer knives, the nicest knives are like above $100. That's why I sort of look at pricing for knives. Now, you know, and that's for, that's for like, um, I should say for Chinese knives. Now for like American knives, it's a little bit different. <laughs> American knives, you know, you get the budget knives in between, you know, all the way up to about $100. Anything under $100, if you get an American knife, I would consider that a budget knife. And the mid-grade knives are pretty much in between $100 to $200. And then for the higher-end American knives, you know, what I would call it like, you know, like the more expensive ones, the ones that really are costing too much, or usually have like exotic steels or whatever and materials, those would be like $200 and above. Oh, I'm noticing one thing though. I like the action on the on the um, sin cut a little bit better. Okay, that let me let me try. It. Let me switch hands because I was making it fail with my. Um... I think it just, I think this blade is a little bit heavier and just needs a little bit more torque then, because this one even when you do it light, this blade it still comes out. This one has the better action. Let me see how this one is. It's nice and tight. No up and down. No, no blade play. Oh yeah, this is tight all the way through. It's a well-made knife. It just likes to be in the strong hand. Feels like it needs to be lubed a little bit too. Out of curiosity, people, let's lube it up. I've lubed this one. This one's been lubed. I'm digging it, though. The Lago. This is a, a CJRB Lago plunge lock. <coughs> Excuse me. And they make them with all different kind of handle colors and blade finishes and stuff like that. This is just the one I chose. Oh yeah, there you go. See what I mean? Just need a little loop. It sort of bounces when you bring it back fast. That's what the Kaisers do too. The ones that don't do it are the Sin Cuts and the Civivis. 
See, even when I bring it back hard, when, when the blade lands, it stays. It doesn't bounce out of its position. I just think the Savivis and the, and the, and now I, I'm, this is my first sim cut. This is the very first one. And it's extremely well made. It's just like, I, as a matter of fact, I sort of like this blade the best out of the Savivis. You know, I have the coat. When I say the Savivis, I'm talking about the Cogent, the Chevalier, and the Conspirator. Those are the other ones that I have that are, that are the Savivis. They, they, I think they're just, I think the build quality on them is just like perfection. They're just like perfect. And this one I feel the same way about. This one feels perfect too. And I love this blade. I think this is my favorite blade out of all of them so far. It's the Watuga. Wakanda forever. <laughs> I love it. This is an excellent knife. But this one, I like the way this handle feels better. This handle feels like it's filling my hand. Whereas this one feels slim, you know, it feels slim like it's a little small lightweight knife, but it actually does have a little bit of weight to it. It weighs 3.7 ounces, like the same exact weight as like an 80, 20.5. This way, this one, see what it, what it weighs. Four point four ounces. Four point four ounces. So you all you probably, you probably understand what I'm talking about now when I'm talking about the weight. It just has a really nice weight to it. The thickness of the blade. Let me get that. Zeroed out. Okay. Thickness of the blade. Now that can't be right. Hold on. Let me let me re zero. Okay. So it's two two and that two point like six millimeters. Yeah, it's a real thin blade. I thought it was wrong. Let me let me do it one more time. It looks thicker than that. It looks like it's just under like three millimeters, like maybe like a two seven five or something like that. Now it's two point five five or five six. That's the second time I zeroed it, and then came up with the same results. So it's a real thin blade. Now this one, is three millimeter. All right, so this one's a little bit thicker. The blade stock, not that much thicker though. I'll let, let you guys look at them, compare them. Both of these are gonna be awesome slicers. And that's the reason why I got it, because I like slicers for you know, like small knives. A small knife to me is like a three and a half inch one that's a lightweight knife. This, this is a three, and I don't really like going any smaller than that because I like knives that give me a full four finger grip. And I've tried out knives that are smaller and it just doesn't work for me. The only really small knives that, that work for me is uh, um, the SOG, the SOG, um, Kiku, the SOG Kiku, and, and the one with the XR lock, the XR lock SOG Kiku, and um, the, 80, the Demco Knives 8020.5. Those are really the only two small ones that really fit my hand. You know, knives are just like um, three inches or so. Because I don't really like having a three finger grip. I like having a full, full grip. So three and a half inch knives, are pretty much the, the smallest that I like to get. I don't like to get anything smaller than this. And it's not because of the blade length, it's because of the handle, the handle, the grip. I don't like three finger grips. This one's nice. 
This feels like a great work knife. This feels, this is a great work knife because it's been to work with me now for a couple of days and it's awesome. Just like, just like my, you know, like my, uh, my, what do you call it? The shark, the shark's foot or shark, uh, is that right? Yeah, the shark's foot. It says sheep's, sheep's foot, shark's foot. I like that one too. But this looks like it's going to be a great work knife too. It looks like it's going to be awesome for slicing cheese and salami and opening up packages and stuff. And if it could, had to be, it could be a self-defense tool too. Because I would trust this with, you know, with this flipper like this and with the way it is, even if this lock gives out, it's not going to close in on my hand. It has really nice grip too. It feels nice in the hand. Deep carry pocket clip. Um, you got flush screws and it's mounted on top of the scale. Yep. There's a little, just a tiny bit of the, the handle exposed, but that's okay. Especially if you got one of the blacked out, they make an all blacked out one too. I think it's PVD coated. And uh, with, you know, black G10, and I think it has uh, the black hardware with a um, red ring like that. I started to get that one. And I might get that one next. Because <laughs> this looks like a knife I would really like to carry. And you know me, knives I really like to carry, I like to have them all blacked out. This one, you know, but these, you know, they work fine though. Nobody freaks out if they see this knife. The same thing for this. This would be a great work knife. What kind of blade steel is it? AR RPM 9. So it's a powdered steel. This Artisan's proprietary steel. I'm looking for the... Yes. Yet the blade is just under three and a half inches. I'd call it, it's probably like a 3.4 inch blade or something like that. And the handle is just, it's like a, was it four and one, two, three, four, five eighths. Four and five eighths. Total knife, knife length. Let's do it this way. Eight inches, exactly. Total knife length on this one, eight inches. Awesome knife. That's a really awesome knife. I like it. So this is this CJRB. This is their this is their plunge lock. I'm digging it. Solid too. Sweet. All right, people. That's all I got for you right now. The Lago. It's a beautiful knife. Nice polished liners. It's totally finished. The fit and finish on it is perfect. Very well made. My other favorite CJRB is the Recoil Lock CJRBs. An artist and I like a lot of their frame locks, their titanium frame locks. Beautiful knife, people. Highly recommend it. If you want a slicer, see this nice thin blade. This is not a pry bar. This is a slicer. This one's made for cutting. You know, don't be trying to break the tip on it or pry it. Use, use it as a pry bar to prove that it can break. Yeah, it'll break. It'll break. It's a thin blade. It's made for slicing. <laughs> It'll break. You don't have to show me. I believe you. It'll break. It's not a pry bar. This one's a cutter. A slicer. Same goes for this one. The Watuga. I just love saying the Watuga. <laughs> I love the name of this one. Boy, there is really some awesome plunge locks coming out lately. You got a lot of plunge lock choices. And this was like $66 or something like that, if I remember right. I think I paid like 60 bucks for it. A little bit under $70. And I'm happy with it. 
But the action on this one, I, I'm telling you, these are better. I love button locks. I like I like plunge locks. I shouldn't say button locks because there's a lot of knives that like um, the original CB Elementum. That's not a plunge lock. That's a button lock. A button lock that operates like a liner lock type, you know, mechanism or whatever, you know. So it's not a plunge lock. And then like uh, that one that um, Spyderco makes, that's really a compression lock that's operated by a button. So to me, a real button lock should be a plunge lock. And plunge locks were used, are used for like switch blades, for autos. That's where the plunge lock to me sort of comes from. And like the first plunge locks I had were hoax. I have a lot of hoax plunge locks. I love plunge locks. But plunge lock isn't a super strong lock. So if you, if you, if you like plunge locks also, and you're using it for a self-defense tool, make sure you get one with a really nice flipper like this. Where, and it has a nice finger groove where your finger fits inside of it. That's what I would recommend. Because if you're, if you're in a dire situation fighting for your life, the last thing you want is to get cut up by your own knife because it, the lock gave out and it folded in on your hand. That's why I always say fixed blades are the best self-defense tools. I always say after that, cold steel triad locks. After that, dead bolts. You know, and then after that, you know, there's a there's like a, the Spyderco power lock's good. Um, what other locks are really good? I like the Spyderco ball bearing lock. I have a lot of faith in that one too. And I, I even think the compression lock is a really good lock, but it just doesn't have heavy duty components. So I sort of wonder how strong it would be under stress. But the way it's made, if they made the components a little bit more heavy duty, I think it'd be a rock solid lock. Um, so even that, even when I get compression locks, I like to get a nice, I, I like to get, get the models with the um, big flippers, like the sliver axe and the amalgam. Those are my two favorites from Spyderco. And the, for the power lock, the one I like is it was called the Chinook. I think it's called the Chinook. This is a nice knife. And for the um, Hogs, I like the, what's it, X5? I think it's called the X5. They have several different models from Hogs. And, but the one I like best is, that, I think it's called the X5. I can't remember. I should do a video showing you my favorite plunge locks that I have. Brian Time Friends, that's another one, set of plunge locks I have. They're mid-tech knives, not the ones from CRKT, the ones from Brian Tyne Friends. Those are really nice. The ones from CRKT are fun to collect, but I don't really recommend those because they're kind of, they're not, the build quality on them is not really that great. I know a lot of people like them though, so if that's what works for you, that's cool. But the, the build quality is not perfect. <clears throat> the Brian Tyne Friends ones, are perfect. Those are beautiful knives. But they're real heavy duty though. It's like a five millimeter thick blade that they use on those. I like it. Absolutely like it, people. I think I'm gonna get the black one. Because I want I want the black one too. And after having this one, I sort of want the black one now. Because this looks like a knife that I would like to carry a lot. I like the way the pocket clip looks too. It's got a good looking pocket clip. I don't really care for like the Civivi and the, um, I don't know if Syncut uses this pocket clip on all theirs, but it, that doesn't really do nothing. It looks cheap. It looks flimsy and cheap. This one looks like a real pocket clip. I like the way it's black. So when I wear black jeans, this knife would disappear. It's a beautiful knife. All right, people, I'm going on too long with it now. Absolutely love it though. The balance on it feels nice. It feels really nice. I love it. So far though, out of all my small ones that um, I've tried out, I think I like the handle on this one the best. I like the way I feel safe in it. And I like the way it has this big front finger twirl like an um, American Lawman. 
So it feels like it'd be a, a great knife to use in this position. Feels like a great cutter, a great tool. And the lockup on it, look at, look at the plunger. Almost goes all the way across. So for a plunge lock, that'd be a strong plunge lock. Because the problem with plunge locks, a lot of times they don't cover enough of the um, blade tank. If you get a plunge lock knife, make sure the plunge the plunger actually covers the blade tank, you know, a good portion of the blade tank. I think that's like a, a full coverage of the blade tank. It's a tiny little, tiny little, it almost covers the entire blade tank. I've never seen a plunge lock like that. Yeah, this one covers half of the blade tank. That one covers half. This one covers almost the whole blade tank. So I don't, what, I don't know what the materials are, you know, what the grades of steel that they use to make their plunge locks. But um, if they're using good, good steel, this is going to be a strong plunge lock. The one on the CJRB. It has a nice weight to it, too. I like that 4.4 ounces. It feels good in my hand. It feels like I have a real knife. You know what? The blade gets thicker up here. Let me remeasure this. Hold on. I'm looking at the blade, and I can tell. I don't know if you guys can see this. But towards the front, it gets thicker. And I don't know if that's an optical illusion, because they do have a swedge on it. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's 2.7 something. Yep, it's thicker up towards the front. Okay. How come it's not measuring? It seems like it should measure. Oh yeah, back here it's 2.65. And 2.72. So right here, right about here, the, the blade gets thicker. So towards the front of the blade, it's thicker than it is back here. And you could actually see it when you're looking at it like I'm looking at it from the top. I'm looking at the spine. And I can see it make, make uh, the differences. That's, that is weird. Usually blades are thinner in the front, not thicker. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to show you guys the spine. I think it's thick. It's a nice knife. And I know it must be on ball bearings. I don't know what kind of ball bearings these are. We'll do another video where we'll take it apart, take a look at it, because I'm curious. I want to see what the inside looks like. All right, people. Peace out. Stiletto. Hope everybody's doing great out there. Peace.